Ahead of the United Nations General Assembly session, the issue of atrocities against the Baloch people by Pakistan has been raised at the UN Human Rights Council or the UNHCR. Speaking on the behalf of the Baloch Republican Party, Abdul Bukti said that Pakistan continues to commit atrocities against the Baloch people. Thank you, Mr. President. Pakistan continues to violate the basic human rights standards in Balochistan, including social, civil, political, economic, and cultural rights of the Baloch people. The state continues to persecute the Baloch people on the basis of their national identity and political opinion. Massive human rights abuses against civilians, political, and human rights activists are committed on a daily basis. The security forces and intelligence agencies routinely abduct and torture Baloch activists to suppress their political struggle for their rights, including the right to self-determination, which is ensured to all people according to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. By denying this basic human right and by committing gross violations of international human rights standards, such as the right to protection from enforced disappearances, torture, and extrajudicial killings, Pakistan is challenging the authority and sanctity of this council. Military operations uh, targeting civil populace have been intensified recently, which resulted in civilian casualties, mostly women and children. My organization has documented 671 cases of enforced disappearances and 170 cases of extrajudicial custodial killings during such operations across Balochistan within only past three months. If these if these inhuman violations by Pakistan forces in Balochistan continue to be ignored by this council, the, the HRC is sadly allowing another human tragedy to unfold under its watch. I thank you, Mr. President. My colleague Ramesh Ramachandran uh, joins us from the international desk to talk more about that story. Uh, good evening, Ramesh. Uh, what impact, if any, do you think this uh, testament is going to have at the upcoming UNGA session, considering it's going to be uh, the new Pakistani Prime Minister's debut, so to speak? Indeed. Uh, good afternoon to you, Aisha, as well. Now, this is the latest in a series of statements made uh, by the Baloch people and the representatives who are living in exile in Europe, in America, everywhere except Pakistan. And to my mind, this is the latest, uh, in a sense, of the, the, the sentiments being expressed by the Baloch Republican Party, which, uh, of, uh, to, whom, to which uh, Abdul Nawaz Bukti belongs to. And it's interesting, Aisha, the, 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 the language he's chosen to use at the 36th session of the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva. He says Pakistan is challenging the sanctity and authority of the Human Rights Council by doing uh, what, what he has listed in his argument, Extra, extrajudicial uh, killings, torture, enforced disappearances, and he also gives on, goes on to sort of share statistics compiled by his own party. And he says there's been at least 671 cases of enforced disappearances and 170 cases of extrajudicial killings. And to my mind, this uh, will continue into the the other uh, sessions in the Human Rights Council and also at the UN General Assembly, which, uh, where the leaders will be making the respective statements in the next few days. Right. Ramesh, you mentioned, of course, that this isn't the first time that Baloch activists and uh, you know, the Baloch representatives have taken up this issue uh, at international fora. But do you think that uh, at this time, when Pakistan's already facing so much uh, isolation, if you will, on account of uh, being accused of uh, you know, ho hosting terrorist organizations on its soil, that this salvo somehow uh, gains uh, larger proportions? Absolutely. Uh, Aisha, one has to understand what the Baloch or where the Baloch people really are coming from and what their grievances are. Remember, Balochistan is the biggest, largest province of Pakistan and perhaps the richest province by virtue of uh, having uh, mineral resources uh, in plenty. Uh, but the irony is that their share in the national resources are inversely proportional the wealth they actually generate and that to my mind is one of the you know perennial grievances that the Baloch have uh, cited over the last several decades that's number one the, not, the other point which uh, every every few months we get to hear from the Baloch uh, people themselves is the the role of the intelligence agencies of Pakistan 
in carrying out persecution of the Baloch, the enforced disappearances and the torture of some of those uh, civil society activists and political representatives as well. So to my mind, things are in a state of flux on the boil as it were and uh, it is a challenge no doubt for the Pakistani state to uh, come to terms with the, with the sentiments of the Baloch people at large. Right, stay with me Ramesh, uh, let's just l l allow our viewers to listen in once again to uh, what exactly was said at the United Nations uh, Human Rights Council. Let's listen in. Thank you Mr. President. Pakistan continues to violate the basic human rights standards in Balochistan including social, civil, political, economic and cultural rights of the Baloch people. The state continues to persecute the Baloch people on the basis of their national identity and political opinion. Massive human rights abuses against civilians, political and human rights activists are committed on a daily basis. The security forces and intelligence agencies routinely abduct and torture Balot activists to suppress their political struggle for their rights, including the right to self-determination, which is ensured to all people according to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. By denying this basic human right and by committing gross violations of international human rights standards, such as the right to protection from enforced disappearances, torture and extrajudicial killings, Pakistan is challenging the authority and sanctity of this council. Military operations uh, targeting civil populace have been intensified recently, which resulted in civilian casualties, mostly women and children. My organization has documented 671 cases of enforced disappearances and 170 cases of extrajudicial custodial killings during such operations across Balochistan within only past three months. If these, if these inhuman violations by Pakistan forces in Balochistan continue to be ignored by this council, the, the HRC is sadly allowing another human tragedy to unfold under its watch. I thank you, Mr. President. Let's go back to my colleague Ramesh Ramachandran who is joining us uh, live on the broadcast. Ramesh, uh, last year India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi had spoken of uh, Balochistan from the ramparts of the Red Fort. So India's stance in some ways is sort of uh, well understood in South Asia. But is there an overarching uh, international response so to speak to uh, the Balochistan issue or are there schisms in how countries respond to uh, allegations such as these being made uh, by the representative at the UNHCR? Well, clearly, Aisha, human rights abuses and violations, wherever they might be taking place, uh, will be taken cognizance of the larger international community, including in the UN Human Rights Council. So it is, uh, it is, uh, is very evident and self-explanatory that if there are human rights violations happening in Balochistan as we speak, it will be taken note of by the wider international community, including India for that matter. And as you said, uh, Prime Minister Modi of India had uh, remarked on Balochistan last year. Remember, he addressed uh, the, the Independence Day address from the ramparts of the Red Fort here in New Delhi when he uh, spoke about the situation of uh, the people living in Balochistan today, especially in light of the human rights violations and abuses carried out by the state agencies in Pakistan. And to my mind, that was a watershed moment in many ways uh, insofar as Balochistan is concerned. Remember, Remember, that was probably the first and the only time an Indian Prime Minister has spoken about Balochistan in such specific terms uh, on an occasion such as the Independence Day of India from the ramparts of the Red Fort. And to my mind, uh, it would, ha would have uh, not gone unnoticed in many parts of the world, including inside Balochistan. And since then, we've seen many leaders uh, living in exile in Europe and other parts of, uh, of the world uh, coming in touch with the Indian government uh, in search of uh, you know, opportunities for uh, voicing the opinion in India and also abroad and uh, one can see uh, such uh, remarks being made by the Republican Party people at international fora in the days to come as well. All right, we leave it at that. Uh, Ramesh, thank you very much.